right, we've had this theme lately where we've been working with rational expressions, and we're kind of continuing that theme here by talking about how to rationalize an expression. All these expressions, after all, uh, the majority of them, at least, will be <coughs> rational expressions. We start with something simple, just to kind of lead into this topic. Say we have 4 over the square root of 3. If we're asked to rationalize you know, a real number expression like this one, we understand that when the radical is in the denominator, we multiply both the numerator and denominator by that radical. We do that so that in the denominator, radical will disappear, radical will cancel out, right? You got square root of 3 times square root of 3, you're going to get 3 back because, hey, that's the square root of 9. And then in your numerator, where it's okay apparently to have the radicals, got the 4 times the root 3, best we can write out is just 4 root 3. So there's a, you know, a real quick summary of how we go through and rational, rationalize a, a, a real number expression. Now carrying that over to, to more complex looking expressions, something like 9 over 2 plus the square root of 3, you know, also a real number expression. You've got that root in the denominator, you don't want that root there, but the uh, trick is with this one you've got you know, a plus or minus attached. Does anybody remember what we do on a, a problem of this type? Remember what we use? 2 minus root 3, there you go. You remember what 2 minus root 3 is called? Conjugate, there you go. So when you got roots involved in the denominator, like we have here, and something is added or subtracted to those roots, that's where the conjugate comes into play. And remember, for the conjugate, all you do is you write out the same expression, except you change the sign in between the two terms. So as we do that here, I'll distribute the 9 through to the numerator. I have 18 minus b 9 root 3. All of that over, when you multiply the conjugates, understand your foiling. But also recall that when you FOIL, the outside inside terms always cancel. So if you just multiply the first and the last, that'll take care of what we need here. Uh, multiplying the first, 2 times 2, we got 4. Multiplying the last, it's a positive times a negative, so it's always going to be minus here. Root 3 times root 3 will cancel to 3, meaning you've got 1 in the denominator. So your answer would just be 18 minus 9 root 3. Wait, what is it? All right, so let's try one that's got some variables in it. Let's take an expression where we've got an x minus 25 in the numerator. We've got a square root of x plus 5 in the denominator. So you got that root in the denominator. That root is attached to another term through addition in this case. Whether it's addition or subtraction, we're going to use conjugates. So I take the conjugate of the denominator. Conjugate would be the square root of x minus 5. I multiply that to the denominator. also have to multiply that to the numerator. All right, let's think about this one for a moment. Let's go ahead and do the easy part first. A lot of times doing the easy part first, and by the easy part I mean let's uh, multiply out the conjugates in the denominator. A lot of times what happens is you start to notice some uh, key factors present themselves. Like if I take these conjugates, I multiply them out. I've got my square root of x times my square root of x, which is just going to be x. Outside, inside terms cancel. So I take positive 5 times the negative 5. I get negative 25. That should stand out to you, right? Because if you look at the numerator and what you would have to multiply out there, ultimately keeping in mind that this is a rational expression where we like to factor things out, we like to cancel things out, right? Does it make sense to FOIL this out? No. It makes sense to keep that in a factored form. So yeah, as I do these problems, I like to do the easy part first. The easy part's the conjugates. I multiply those out just to see if anything 
is down here that might be in common with what's already on top. In this case, we got the x minus 25. Since we left everything in the factored form, we can cancel out those common factors, meaning that all that's left is the square root of x minus 5. That's your simplified answer. You know, when we talk about rationalizing, we're usually talking about problems where we're trying to get a radical out of the denominator. But, you know, keeping in mind, again, where we're trying to go with this review, understanding that this is kind of a calc prep, sometimes rationalizing the numerator can help us out. So let's take a problem here to uh, conclude with for today, where we have the square root of a plus h minus the square root of a all over h. This time, all the radicals are in the numerator. But if I'm asked to rationalize, then OK. It really doesn't matter where these radicals are at. They're in the numerator. Kind of follow the same theme we've been following. Take the conjugate of that radical expression. So in this case, you've got two roots. If I change the sign in between, it'd be plus. The conjugate's going to be the square root of a plus h plus the square root of a. I'll multiply that to both the numerator and denominator. Now this one looks a little more involved than the, the previous few examples, right? But think about what's starting to work out for us in these previous few. You know, in the previous few, we did the easy part, the so-called easy part first, which was multiply out the conjugates. So my conjugates here in the numerator, if I FOIL this out, all right, looks a little involved, but really should work out pretty nice. If I take the square root of a plus h and multiply by the square root of a plus h, what do I get? a plus h, right, because the root disappears. So it looks a little crazy, but not too bad when you multiply there. Outside, inside terms, we cancel. When you multiply the last, it's the negative times the positive, so it's minus. The square root of a times square root of a is just a, right? So if I leave that over, sure, I could distribute this h, but notice what happens by not multiplying this out once again. Right? We did this on number three as well. Left it in the factored form. Notice what happens. If you collect your like terms in the numerator, You've got a couple of a's that cancel out, right? That means the only thing left is this h. And since that's the only thing that's left, and we didn't multiply this h through, it's still factored out down here. Can you cancel those h's? Is that allowed? Sure it is. You can cancel this h and this h. When you do that, one is left here, one is left there, right? So your simplified answer after you rationalize this numerator is 1 over the square root of a plus h plus the square root of a. Are you allowed?